Welcome to a brand new episode of the Jam Pack Report today for November the 3rd of 2020. And it is election day, so if you have not cast your vote, be sure to head out to your local polling place, make your voice heard, because your vote is the foundation of American democracy, and it actually does matter. Uh, on top of that, there's a lot of anger right now, a lot of tension, and I don't talk about politics very often, but what I do want to say today is to be kind to one another to treat each other with love and respect, to treat others the way that you would want to be treated, because these are all elements that often go overlooked in today's day and age, and they're incredibly important to the human experience. And I understand that this show is often used as a form of escapism for some people, and it's even used as a form of escapism for me when I make it. I totally understand, uh, but I would be very remiss to not mention these things on a day that is very important in not only our country, but also in our entire lifetime. Uh, very significant events going on around you. And also, pay attention, because this is something that will be talked about for decades and decades to come. It's an incredibly interesting time to be alive. It's one that will be filling chapters of history books for the millennia in the future. That's probably not true. No one will remember this in millennia. Anyway, let's not get existential today. You're here for gaming news, and today we're talking about the new TwitchCon virtual event that is coming next week. Meet GlitchCon. The pandemic has taken many things from the world, but mostly it's stolen events. That's a bit of a controversial statement because millions of people have died. Uh, but that's beside the point, I suppose. Uh, every hang is a potential death sentence. Thankfully, Twitch at least has gone virtual and announced today that its flagship conference, TwitchCon, will be happening online this year. Oh, and it's not called TwitchCon, it's now GlitchCon, and it's happening on November the 14th. Quote, important announcement from Twitch, the ad begins. Numerous glitches have been observed on Twitch. In this particular universe, those glitches were caused by, yes, a portal to another dimension. Which is fun. If GlitchCon is anything like the analog version, it'll show off the site's artists, cosplayers, and communities. TwitchCon is the streaming platform's signature event, and its main function is to bring its numerous, disparate communities of streamers and fans together. It's where online friends become real-life confidants. Here is hoping the online version can achieve something similar, which has not said anything about what we can expect. And as of right now, there has not been an update. But ultimately, in a world where events have been taken by the pandemic, it is appropriate to have some kind of event. Uh, I'm sure that it's going to be hosted on the front page. I'm sure it's going to be a community-based event where it could be a marathon stream where people are just bopping in and out. Uh, but personally, I'm looking forward to features coming to Twitch. Because there's always this TwitchCon keynote that shares more about the new advancements coming to the platform, the new features coming to the platform, uh, ways that streamers can better interact with their audience. Uh, it is a very interesting time because Twitch is such a big part of gaming culture. Uh, on top of that, it's been a very tumultuous year for Twitch. You have a lot of creators that are being accused of various acts. Uh, you have a lot of tension around the ad situation right now where there are ads that are inundating people's experiences on Twitch, and then those that are using ad blockers are essentially uh, having to still watch some form of an ad that Twitch is pumping through via code itself. Uh, very interesting time to be a streamer on Twitch for DMCA reasons, where music labels are issuing copyright strikes when previously, for the last 10 years, they've just turned a blind eye to the streaming population on Twitch. Uh, really just a strange time for this online streaming platform. But they do have an opportunity to make an impactful statement. They have an opportunity to turn the tides of public opinion. And there's a lot to break down here. Uh, so if you do want to tune in, again, it's all happening on November the 14th. You can find the official Twitch tweet there over on Twitter. And you can head into that portal and see what's going on as the dimensions collapse together. Uh, now, on top of that, speaking of events, BlizzCon Online 2021 will be free for everyone there will not be any virtual tickets to buy for BlizzCon Online next year. It will be free. In September, Blizzard announced BlizzCon Online for 2021 following the cancellation of this year's usual convention due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, in a new fireside chat, company president J. Allen Brack has revealed that the online version of BlizzCon will be totally free. PC Gamer reports that the virtual ticket system used for previous years will not be in place. Instead, everyone who wants access to BlizzCon can do so for free from their homes. The event, which runs from February 19th through 20, 2021, will no cost uh, will not cost you a cent. Excuse me. This might mean, of course, that some of the rewards usually tied to BlizzCon tickets, like unique character skins, might end up costing some money. We'll have to wait and see what happens. Brack also revealed that 95% of Blizzard employees are currently working from home. 
BlizzCon 2021 will likely look very different from the events of previous years. Blizzard's sta- uh, slate of unannounced upcoming titles include Diablo 4, a mobile spinoff, Diablo Immortal, and Overwatch 2. More information from these games is expected during the event. Hearthstone continues to be updated as well, while StarCraft 2 has received its last major update as the studio looks towards the franchise's future. World of Warcraft, meanwhile, will receive its Shadowlands expansion before 2020 is over. So, if you have been looking forward to BlizzCon Online coming in 2021, uh, then you are going to be able to tune in for free, which is very nice. Uh, And I think this is a good pivot because of, again... Kind of article number one, Twitch. It's very important for communities to be able to enjoy the content that is being put out with the communities they are involved in. Uh, so, for instance, I think of Tally, who is kind of my favorite World of Warcraft streamer. Of course, he is pretty much one of the first streamers I ever watched on Twitch. Uh, but to be able to watch BlizzCon with him on his stream uh, would be a much more welcoming experience for somebody like myself who might not be as into the world of Blizzard as someone else. So if you are looking forward to the event, again, it is going to be completely free. I'm sure more details will be announced soon uh, because that is actually coming up in just a couple of months. Really, you have February 19th through the 20th of 2021, and I'm sure you can tune into the usual channels to keep yourself up to date and in the know. And of course, I'll share what I can here on the Jam Pack Report. But Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart is a PS5 exclusive, Insomniac reiterates the title will not be coming to PS4. Sony Interactive Entertainment announced the game for PS5 in June when it said it would be released during the console's launch window. During the same event, Sony also announced Marvel Spider-Man Miles Morales, Horizon Forbidden West, and Sackboy A Big Adventure for PS5, although it later confirmed these games would be released for PS4 too. Insomniac seemingly ruled out a PS4 release for Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart via Twitter on Monday. Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart is an interdimensional adventure that uses the PS5's SSD to rapidly transport players between different locations. Insomniac creative director Marcus Smith has also claimed that the haptic feedback and adaptive triggers on PS5's DualSense controller will make each weapon in Ratchet's out-of-this-world arsenal feel unique and more powerful than ever. For example, the double-barrel enforcer shotgun has multiple fire modes, enabling players to fire single or double shots depending on how hard they squeeze the trigger. Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart will be playable at 30fps at 4K resolution and at 60fps at a lower resolution. Insomniac premiered a 7-minute Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart gameplay demo during Gamescom in August if you do want to check that out, and it was pretty impressive. Uh, Now I will say, not shocking that this one is not coming to the PS4 because of the nature of this, these portals that essentially transport players instantaneously to another section of the world. Uh, It is very important to have that SSD technology in place to make that possible. Uh, Because with a loading screen, this game loses all of its luster, and it really does showcase what an SSD is capable of in the next-gen console. So it is good to see the games are beginning to transition towards being PlayStation 5 exclusives because although you might not want to upgrade from your PS4 Pro yet or your even one day PlayStation 4 or day one PlayStation 4, uh, it is important to really throw yourself into this new generation as a developer and take advantage of all of the new technology that you can because you can't continue to focus entirely on making sure that last gen can run if you plan on taking full advantage of what the PlayStation 5 and even the Xbox Series X and S are capable of. So, Rift Apart is going to be coming to PS5. Of course, there is no definitive release date that I'm aware of right now, but they will be sure to update you as time goes on via the official Insomniac Games Twitter account if you did want to follow over there. And of course, I will let you know on the drop as well as right here on the Jam Pack Report. Now, speaking of launch games on the PS5, Demon Souls has, a, has over 180 game help videos for PlayStation Plus subscribers. That is a lot of videos. Earlier this year, Bluepoint Games finally revealed that Demon Souls will be launching on PS5, and last week we saw some new gameplay footage of the game running on the next-gen PlayStation. It has been revealed that the game will feature help videos that will be available to view through one of the console's new features. When the PS5 UI experience was showcased last month, we got to see a large range of new features. One of those was Game Help. Game Help is a feature available only to those subscribed to PlayStation Plus and will allow players to watch a bunch of developer-made videos that aim to act as guides on how to complete a specific section. Demon's Souls will apparently feature over 180 of those, according to a Washington Post interview with Gavin Moore, creative director of Demon's Souls. 
Of course, they go on to talk more about the fact that there will be no difficulty options, etc. Uh, but for those that have been wanting to dive into Demon Souls, but might be a bit concerned about the difficulty, uh, this is something that could potentially make it a bit more welcoming for you. Of course, this basically cuts out the middleman to where you don't have to search for a YouTube video if you don't want to. Uh, but ultimately, if you are a PlayStation Plus subscriber, this is one of the benefits the next gen console brings to you. But the controller itself on the PlayStation 5 is pretty impressive. We've seen a lot of creators get their hands on them, and there is a lot of positive reaction across the internet. But the PS5's new controller is amazing. Here is how it works. When I first picked up the PlayStation 5's new DualSense controller, I was totally blown away by the haptic feedback and adaptive triggers, says Tom Warren over at The Verge. The PS5 ships with Astro's Playroom, which is the perfect showcase for this controller and everything it's capable of. Sony has added haptic feedback to its new PS5 controllers that makes you feel the environment in Astro's Playroom with adaptive triggers that provide tension when you're drawing a bow or pulling on a cord. While it is easy to dismiss it as just another fancy vibration feature, the new DualSense controller goes beyond what I've ever experienced on a Nintendo Switch, Xbox controller, or even the great haptic feedback you'll find on modern smartphones. The key additions are these new adaptive triggers that really change the way games feel, and here's a GIF showing them off. A new teardown spotted by Polygon shows exactly how the adaptive triggers are able to provide realistic tension using a special motor. Tronics Fix has torn apart the DualSense controller to provide us with an inside look at these new triggers. Sony has added a motor with a spiral gear. When current is not running through the motor when the triggers feel like regular ones, as soon as current is added though, the motor, oh, excuse me, let me try that again. When current is not running through the motor, then the triggers feel like regular ones, but as soon as current is added through the motor, this generates tension and resistance for the triggers. These triggers are the highlight of Astro's Playroom. You can feel the tension as you pull on the rope to move throughout levels. This pack and game even transforms you into a loaded spring at one point where you feel the tension of a spring in the triggers. You can see this resistance in action below. Astro's Playroom is clearly the best demo of this new controller right now, but more games are coming that will make special use of the DualSense. Fortnite is using the haptic feedback on the DualSense to make players feel like they're holding different weapons, and the triggers will also adapt for ranged weapons. In NBA 2K21, the adaptive triggers will change as a player's energy drains, adding more resistance on the sprint trigger. PS5 exclusive Deathloop will also use the adaptive triggers to make weapons feel different, and even block the adaptive triggers when a gun jams. The DualSense will clearly shine in first-party PS5 exclusives, but Fortnite, NBA 2K21, and other titles show that there is some early third-party interest in what this new controller is capable of. If developers keep experimenting with the DualSense, then PS5 owners could be about to experience a very different feel to the next-gen games. This is incredibly cool, and it's starting to calm my fears that the features of the DualSense will not be used. Because whenever I first saw this, and whenever I first heard about this technology, my initial reaction was that it's going to be Touchpad Part 2, where just a few of these launch games take advantage of the new technology, and then the rest of the generation is basically streamlined and back to normal, what would be considered the equivalent of playing with a DualShock 4 or an Xbox One controller on the current gen. Uh, but it sounds like there is a lot of interest here, and if developers are able to take advantage of these tools relatively easily, uh, then I don't see why they would stop. Because if you build it, say, in a Call of Duty game, you can still iterate on that throughout the next few Call of Duty games. Uh, and that's just one example. Of course, Astrobot's Playroom is one of the biggest one uh, game that is going to be really showing what this controller is capable of because that's what it's designed to do. But I would love to see how it's going to be used in Deathloop. I would love to be able to feel what it's like in NBA. I think there's a lot of potential here if developers continue to use the controller's features. Uh, but we will see as time goes on how much these features are used. But of course, whether you're playing on Xbox Series X or PlayStation 5, you are in for a treat. And if you're on Series X, we now have the full list of streaming apps coming out on day one. Microsoft has revealed which streaming apps will be included with the Series X and S on launch on November the 10th. The good news is the selection is nice and comprehensive. Like the PS5 entertainment apps, the new Xbox consoles will support Apple TV. That means you can access Apple TV Plus on both new consoles, which to date has not been possible on PS4 and Xbox One. Here is a list of everything confirmed so far, but note this list is not complete, with more promised by Microsoft in the future. You have Netflix, Apple TV, Disney+, Plus, HBO Max, Spotify, YouTube, YouTube TV, Amazon Prime Video, Hulu, NBC Peacock, Vudu, Vandango Now, Twitch, SkyGo, NowTV, and Sky Ticket. 
If you're in the US, you can subscribe to channels like Showtime, CBS All Access, and AMC Plus through Apple TV. But the main attraction is checking out Apple TV Plus content like Ted Lasso, Mythic Quest, Raven's Banquet, and Greyhound with Tom Hanks. So if you want to subscribe, of course, you can uh, subscribe to this service through the console for $4.99. And of course, a free trial is coming as well if you do want to do that. But as somebody who has Netflix, Amazon Prime, Spotify, Twitch, YouTube, uh, what else do I have? HBO Max, I'm bumming off of a friend. Is that legal to say? Who knows? Uh, But it's nice to have these options because we live in a world where streaming is such a big part of our lives. Streaming is pretty much where we are going to be getting entertainment with going forward. Because if you look to movie theaters, they are still kind of shut down. AMC has had their profits drop 90%. So, with that being taken into consideration, it's important that these next-gen consoles be comprehensive in the experience they can offer. And it looks like they will be, at least on the Xbox Series X. And of course, hopefully we will have some kind of comprehensive list on the PlayStation 5, unless there's one already out there. But, of course, we will all see very shortly. But that rounds out today's episode of the Jam Pack Report. If you enjoyed today's show, drop me a like down below and let me know what stories caught your eye on today's program. And, of course, how do you feel about the new GlitchCon virtual event coming next week? And will you be attending BlizzCon 2021 online? Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. But until next time, you guys have a fantastic rest of your day. I'll talk to you soon, and peace.